uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, kitchen lighting, uh, which is you know, an incredibly important part of the home. Um, this is the, the engine room of the home, the heart of the home, and the lighting is uh, incredibly important. Um, and we're going to be able to tell you today uh, how best to light it. Um, just to remind you, uh, if you're new to the Light Bite series, um, all of our previous webinars are available to view through our website. If you go to johncullenlighting.com and then you navigate to the events category, uh, you can see uh, all the webinars there. You just enter your details and you can view those on demand. So in terms of the kitchen, um, the kitchen's really changed um, over time. Um, it's not uh, just a place where you will prepare food um, and you need sort of functional task lighting. Uh, it's become much more part of the living space of the home um, and the way in which we light um, the kitchen has changed as well uh, to accommodate that. So um, we have already done um, a lighting webinar for open plan spaces. Uh, that was actually the first webinar we did. So if you want to see how you can bring the kitchen into the dining living room environment, using the lighting, then do refer back to that webinar if you haven't seen it already. Today, we're gonna to be focusing just on the kitchen. The first thing in the kitchen really is, is looking at the working triangle between you know, the fridge, the cooker, the sink, and, and understanding that you only need light in those certain areas. You know, think about where you're gonna require the lighting the most, and then you position the lights in those areas. So you can see in this image here, for example, that we've got high intensity light uh, onto the bank of units at the back, onto the sink area and onto the island. The walkways through this space, we don't have lots of down lights in that, in that area. They would just be lighting down onto the floor and they'd potentially be causing a shadow onto the work surfaces. So preventing you from actually seeing um, you know, what you're doing. Uh, and if you're playing with, not playing, but if you're using sharp knives, um, you, know, you, you need to be able to see what you're doing. It's quite critical, actually. Uh, here again, you can see that high level of intensity onto the work, uh, work surfaces. Um, and there are other elements uh, which we've incorporated here, such as the uplights in the windows, uh, above the, uh, the tool units, and also under the island bar. So all of these elements are being added together to create the final effect. So I'm just going to dissect this for you and talk about each of the elements separately and how we've layered the lighting here so that hopefully you can understand it following that. First of all, with your, with your down lights, um, you don't wanna just throw them in uh, in a grid format throughout the space. Um, it's quite an easy thing to do is say that you need one down light per meter squared, that sort of thing. Um, but actually, if you think about what the down lights are lighting, um, that's going to be the most powerful and important thing to, to consider. So here in this particular uh, example, uh, you've got the, the kitchen cupboards. Um, it's all very linear. Um, it's all sort of segmented. And it would make sense for your lights to be centered on each of those panels so that where the light falls makes sense in relation to the furniture which you have in the room. Here uh, in this particular space, um, we weren't able to put lights into the ceiling. Um, and that's quite typical, um, particularly for uh, you know, modern extensions where you might have a lot of glass on the ceiling uh, or it could be sloping, for example. Um, this was a listed building, so that's what prevented us from uh, installing down lights in the ceiling. But there are other tricks you can do in order to incorporate lighting. So here, for example, above these uh, wall hung units, we've got little spotlights integrated into um, sort of a custom pelmet. So that allows us to install those lights and then have an up light on top of the units as well. But you can see with the position of all of those down lights, they're centered on the cupboard doors. So it's very important that when we're doing the lighting designs, that we have the elevations of the kitchen available to us so that we can make sure everything is positioned properly um, and it all looks uh, considered. It might be that you don't have the, the flat ceiling. As I mentioned, um, a lot of kitchen ceilings are sloping. Um, here we've been fortunate enough to be able to incorporate a couple of surface mounted spotlights uh, on the beams here. So a very small low glare spotlight, this is called a Vorsa 30, um, and that you can attach to the beam there and then that provides you with a very similar light to what you would get from uh, a recessed downlighter. Obviously it's surface mounted so 
a little less dis a little less discreet. Um, but actually, if you go for something which has a baffle uh, and is low glare, then you really don't notice it too much. And then here in this ceiling, um, this is not something that you would want to put recessed down lights into. <laughs> that would uh, really destroy the beauty of that ceiling. Um, so task lighting needs to come from, in this case, the shelving uh, on the left-hand side. We've integrated some LED strip there. Uh, and also this canopy that hangs over the island, that also has integrated lighting to provide you with, with light down to the work surface. The uplight um, that we have towards the ceiling um, does two jobs. Uh, it highlights the decorative element of the ceiling, which is great, but it also provides an amazing boost of light to the space. Uh, it makes the ceiling feel higher uh, and uh, adds a lot of ambient lighting to the room. So I'll just show you that in a bit more detail here. This particular kitchen where we've got uh, just the down lights on, you can see we're lighting towards um, all the vertical surfaces here, which is a good thing to do, um, much better than using just straight down lighters. But it does feel a little bit gloomy in here at the moment. If we're to integrate um, some linear lighting on top of the, these units, you can see how much brighter the space feels instantly. Uh, the ceiling feels higher as well. And we've actually turned off all of those down lights. Um, the ones over the island are still on, uh, but the perimeter ones have been turned off. Uh, and you can see that actually you get a lot of light from the supply. Um, and it's just an LED strip on top of the units. Uh, so really, really simple little trick um, that you can use to, to improve the space. It's amazing how different it feels with just such a simple element of lighting. Um, yeah. But is there, is there sort of a recommendation for how much space you need if you're, if you're going to use a, a, a style of lighting like that? Um, it slightly depends on the effects that you want to create. Um, but I would say that you don't really want to do this if you've got less than 150 millimeters of space above mm -hmm. the units. Um, because if, you, if you're too close to the ceiling, what you end up with is just a strip of light on the ceiling and you don't get this diffusion. So what you can see in the image here is light bouncing off the ceiling and reflecting back down into the space, but it needs space between the light fitting and the surface which it hits to diffuse um, and spread. Uh, and that's why we're getting such a good effect here. Let me just switch back between those again. You can see the difference, a bit gloomy, bright and fresh. And then actually it's probably a combination <clears throat> of the different effects that you would want to go for because here, with the recessed down lights, when you open a cupboard door, that light shines through into the cupboard and highlights you know, everything inside and, and helps you find uh, what you're looking for. Mm. <clears throat> if you don't have um, wall lights, uh, sorry, wall uh, units, which you can uh, fit lights on top of, um, here we've used a nifty little trick, which is to have the, the wall paneling, uh, which is provided by the kitchen company. So it's just a very small little ledge um, above which we've been able to position an LED strip. In a more traditional kitchen, it might be that you've got a picture rail that uh, runs around the perimeter of the room. Uh, so it could be that you could incorporate something into that. Um, it would look quite neat. Um, but the amount of light that you're getting from this is incredible. Um, you can see it's flushing light all over the ceiling there uh, and really brightening up the space. Uh, this unit here, um, you, what you can see is um, the surface finish of the doors is very reflective. Um, so you end up seeing reflections of uh, other light sources within the space. Um, if you have a matte uh, door finish, then you're probably more likely to want to light towards it so that you can make that feel brighter. Um, but here with the reflections, it works quite well. Um, in the more modern kitchens like this one here, linear lighting uh, tends to be used uh, quite a lot. Um, underneath the uh, wall hung units for task lighting, but also above. And then a ceiling detail over the island is also quite typical. <clears throat> and then this might be mirrored over the dining table as well. So it tends to be that if you're doing a ceiling detail like that, it would, um, it would tend to be above the island in the same shape of the island um, so that you sort of have this mirrored effect between ceiling uh, and furniture. Uh, and then you can hang your pendants within that and the spotlight. So you can see that we don't have many spotlights in the ceiling now. We just have a couple over the, over the island to give you an extra bit of task light and to you know, increase the impact that you're getting from the, from the pendants. But this is mostly just uh, linear lighting with a little bit of decorative light as well. <clears throat> 